So you've got your Toki Marui Block 17 Gen 5 MOS But you want a bit more A bit more from your mags, maybe a bit more capacity, a bit more gas And mag extensions are no new thing so We're going to take a look at this one today which is from Janus or Janus Janus Division Group or JDG, and this is the JDG Floyd's G17 Gen 5 mag extension for the TM G17 Gen 5 black. I believe they do these in different colours. I've got three uh, mags for my G17 Gen 5, so I've picked up three of these mag extensions, and today we're going to fit it and see what it looks like, and yeah, just get 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 to it basically. So. Let's grab the G17 and just give it a quick look on how these normal mags fit in the Glock. So nothing special going on here. We've got our pistol, we've got our standard mags, and that is how we run it. But we want a little bit more. I fitted mag extensions before. We did it to the AAP01 for the CTM build. And I did it years ago. I can't remember what brand they were. I think they were like RGW or something like Ready Fighter. Ready Fighter it was for my old G17. So first thing we have to do is make these magazines safe to operate because they're currently under pressure. So I'm just gonna empty the last bit of gas out of that magazine, make sure it's completely empty. Let's take the mag extension out of the package. Now these were purchased um, for me in like basically my uh, friend Flo was doing an order from I think it was WGC uh, she said do you want anything I was like yeah actually I was looking at picking some of these up at the time so if you're going to put a cheeky order in just grab me some of them and uh, happy days so we can uh, pull this little o-ring out that's inside the extension so I imagine that's what we're going to be using to seal this on the magazine so it goes in the mag like that so let's take that off for now we've got the Floyd I think it's Floyd's marking on the back here um, the way that the real ones go on is they, they slide into position and then you have this bar on the back that locks them in place and uh, for the real ones of course they give you an extra couple of rounds I think so to get this started, got a bit of a damage on that magazine there. I'm not sure where that's come from, but shit happens, I suppose. So we'll take this out here. We'll take the base plate off. We are empty in terms of gas. So I'm going to take my valve tool and we'll be able to see what type of valve is fitted into this magazine. So we'll take that out first. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. So we just got a normal valve. Um, I'm not sure if there's an extension tube on the base plate, but that is just a normal TM spit valve. We've got a couple of pins on the bottom. So I'm just gonna see if I can determine which way they come out, let's, let's give one a tap um, and see what's going on. So we'll try it this way first. So going left to right, and that mean, that is the right way because we've got the knurling on the pin. So we'll take out the front one and we'll take out the rear one. And on the old Ready Fighter style ones, you had a screw that goes through the base plate, uh, which attaches it to the magazine. Um, of course, Maruri have done away with that. They've gone back to the pins. We can pull this out here. We do have an extension tube on there. So it'll be nice. We don't have to modify it because it's not fitted to the upgrade part. And there we go. We take that off. This has a seal on there. What we'll do is keep this as a spare. I'm going to get the one pen, the one grease. And all I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply some 
in the slot. Make sure we don't get any sort of dry patches on the sealing o-ring. We can place this on. Now with these, what you want to do is sort of hold it at the back there and then pull it over the corners and pull because what can happen, you'll see how I fitted it on the first time, you can actually twist the uh, o-rings when you when you roll it over, which means the, uh, the o-ring is twisted and that can affect the seal that you get on the magazine. So do a pull over the corners instead of a, you know, a twisting motion to sort of roll it over the edge. So we've got that lubed up there. Our extension piece can slide into the bottom. So we're just, just gonna drop that in there. So it's got a little slot perfectly cut out for it. And then we can place this into the mag. Now when we're doing this, so we knock the pins out left to right, so we're going right to left. This was the front pin. And what we're gonna to have to do, which might be difficult, is we're gonna to have to put downwards pressure on the mag like that. So all I'm doing is I'm pushing this against the bench. And that enables us to start the pins off. And then whilst holding pressure on the opposite side, we're going to tap them in and then what we want to do is we want to get it started so you'll see the pins are just slightly off and if I push this down it is hard but you just want to give that sort of force to allow them to line up in the holes and it's good if you've got a hammer like this with a, a sort of narrower end on the opposite end because it, what it will do is it will stop you hitting the mag base and damaging it so what I normally tend to do is I hold the mag and I push down on the bench this pin does not want to go in finally finally got that pin in there's a bit of uh, scratches on the one side I'm not too worried about that And there we go. We're going to take our valve. We get a little bit of the oil and just pop some on the O-ring. Slide that into the bottom there. And then we can reinstall the valve. There we go. Nip that up. Gas it up and test the seal. Might be running low on the uh, propane bottle. So what we've gone from is, let's hold this on there. You've got the empty cavity in the mag, so you've got all this space. This takes up half of it, so you can only put half of the uh, you can only fill half up with liquid gas. Obviously, these base plates remove this. So now we have this much space minus the valve stem, which is probably going to come to around about here. So we're going to have all this space and it's going to give us some extra rounds. You can see the follower can go much further down to the magazine as it gets stuck. So it can travel much further down. Just have to keep an eye on that. If it does get stuck, we might have to work it in a little bit. This is a new product to me. I've never had anything from these guys before, but uh, hopefully we don't have any issues. So just work it in. You might get a couple of instances where the spring binds up like that. We'll just free it up. What you don't want is you don't want any kind of lubrication in the mag because that will get onto your BBs and then your hot rubber. And I filled that magazine up really poorly. OK, 
Can we uh, fix that? Get these stacked properly. And we go. And this, of course, get that out of the way, is not quite going to fit in with the lanyard loop. So this is this product is made for the Gen 5. I can't remember how we remove this. No ones for the grip. Can't quite remember. Oh, it's a couple of screws, I think, maybe. To remove that lanyard loop. Let's give that a go. With that out, I think we can remove the lanyard loop. And then we can take this and we can put it back in. I've always liked the uh, appearance of mag extensions. I think it just, I don't know. It's uh, maybe influenced by, um, you know, the real steel world. They obviously use them to get more capacity in the magazines. Now these base plates will give you more capacity in terms of BBs and gas. Um, if you don't need that and you just want the look, you can, there's various mag extensions you can get out there that are what, what they deem as like non-functional mag extensions. So it's just like an external piece that you pop on there for the look. But it's nice to have it and it actually have a function. And you can see it sticks out there at the bottom. So we have normal base plates. We have the extended base plates. And of course, we do run, I do run the normal mags that have the, the 22 extensions. So I've got a bunch of mags. I'm pretty sure, you know, cross compatible wise, they'd be absolutely fine. I think I've already tested that when we looked at the G, uh, G17 Gen 5. So yeah, normal Gen 5 mags. I think these are labeled up as like Glock 22 mags. And then of course, the Gen 5 mags with the Floyd's extensions. And I know someone's going to ask me, well, how many rounds can you put in a mag? So we're going to have a look now. Let's fill this thing up and see how many we get. Uh, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23 with loads of space still, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. You could probably get an extra one in there and still have space for the BBC Repress, so 32. Just the spring is wanting to bind up there, so just keep that in mind. I'm not sure what's binding up on that spring. We could also try taking that uh, little plastic follower out. I imagine what's happening because it has the little nub on the bottom. Um, does it say anything here? When installing, please be mindful of the locking pins orientation to ensure a proper seal. So he's actually telling you to spin spin the pins round. I didn't spot that. So one in from the one side, one in from the other. That could have probably helped in, uh, in installation. So 32 rounds. We'll have to have a look at the spring and see what that's binding up. 
But yeah, there we go. I will probably just take the little plastic follower out that has the little nubbin that sits on here. Um, there's two things you could do. You could just remove that part, or I think what's happening is that nubbin is just canting that plastic piece, either forwards or backwards, which is just catching the spring. So it's a simple fix. Of course, I'll do that off camera because I don't want to bore you for another 20 odd minutes. So these are the Janus Division Group's uh, Floyd's G17 Gen 5 mag extensions for the Tokimaru Gen Gen G17 Gen 5 MOS. God, it's a mouthful in it with all these acronyms. More of a race gun look, but you know, instead of like 24, 25 rounds, you're getting 32. So if you were in a Glock and you run, you know, you run it as a primary and you're running around CQB with it, you're probably going to want some of these. They're not cheap. I can't remember exactly how much they are. I think landed to the UK, three of them were like a hundred quid. So not vastly expensive. So there you go. Very, very cool indeed. Thanks very much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the link in the description below if you'd be so kind. And as always, from me and a very chaotic bench at the moment, we'll see you in the next video.